is an open door for you. Find somebody else because they must have been asleep. Find somebody to talk back to you and say, there he is an open door for you. Find somebody else for the third time and say, there he is an open door for you. How many knows that God gives each individual opportunity? God gives us multiple opportunities. He gives us the opportunity for salvation. Can somebody say amen? amen. And then even amen. after salvation and after we begin to serve, and God begins to give us multiple opportunities. The word opportunity means a favorable junction of circumstances. It is a good chance for an advancement or progress. God has given every person in here an opportunity to be better, an opportunity to be more anointed, an opportunity to be more gifted, but some choose to take the opportunity and some don't. And what kills me is when those that don't, they complain about the ones that do. the church, it is an opportunity to get closer to God. It is an opportunity to get healed. It is an opportunity to get deliverance. Every time we have revival, any time the pastor preacher or the evangelist preacher, anything that we come together, it is an opportunity. Henry Hartman said, success always comes when preparation meets opportunity. When you are prepared for God to do something in your life, then you will be successful. Can somebody say amen? Whitney Young also said it is better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than to have an opportunity and not be prepared. Can somebody say amen? It is better. See, what God is wanting us as believers to do is prepare for an opportunity or in other words, prepare for a blessing, prepare for God to use us, prepare for God to speak to us, prepare for God to bless us. And those that like to prepare for the blessings of God and prepare for God to use them and prepare for God to anoint them are the ones that God usually anoints and God usually blesses and God usually pours out His Spirit. Can somebody say amen? Tell somebody, get ready. Come on, just tell them. Tell them. Look at someone and say, get ready. But there is an opportunity in this place tonight for you to leave delivered and set free. But guess what? The choice is up to you. There is an opportunity for you to come out as the head and not the tail, but the choice is up to you, and sometimes we think that it's just going to happen, but you've got to make the choice that I'm going to get it while I can. Look at somebody and just point at them and tell them, say, neighbor, you have a wonderful opportunity to get healed. You have a wonderful chance to get healed and delivered and set free, and by the power of God, if you won't let nothing hinder you, if you won't let nothing stop you, if you won't let nobody talk you out of it, if you want nobody hinder you, and you don't worry about who's in on the outside of you, but you worry about who's on the inside of you, and that's why there's a wonderful opportunity for God to open up the windows of hell and pour you out a blessing that you have not room enough to receive. There's an opportunity for you to exalt our horn like the horn of a unicorn and pour out fresh oil. Shake somebody else's hand. Let you all shake it off. It's that tonight is a wonderful opportunity to you to get something. Jesus, tonight is a wonderful opportunity for you to jump up and get the devil off of your head and get a divorce and get a breakthrough. Tonight is a wonderful opportunity for an advancement, for a greater anointing, for a greater gift. Somebody throw your hand up and say, Lord, I'm ready for an outpouring. I'm ready. And I hear God say, if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and and seek my face and get prepared. Then I hear from heaven. I forgive that sin and bless God. I hear there. If you believe that you're ready and God's going to do something for you, clap your hands and shout. Hallelujah. Preparation is great. You have to get into the junctures 
of preparation. It's like this. You've got to get in the place to receive from God what you want. For instance, when you go to McDonald's and you pull through the drive-thru and you pull up to the speaker, how may I help you today? Yes, I'd like to have a Big Mac, large fry, and a sweet tea, two apple pies for a dollar. Thank you very much. And they give you the total. And guess what? But if you do not move from the place that you ordered to the place that you can receive, oh, no. then you're not able to get what you want. Oh, no. See, this this, this writer here, John the Revelator, this man had got on the Isle of Patmos. Uh, he had been hearing from the Lord. And here in Revelation chapter 3, he begins to write to the church that is in Philadelphia. And he said to them, the listen here who's talking to you. He is number one to my shot. He's holy. Yeah. He's talking about the God. God, for God. For John wasn't writing to them. But Jesus was talking to the church. And he said, John records him number one as he's holy. Somebody shout, he's holy. holy. Somebody else say, he's a holy God. The word holy means exalted and worthy of complete devotion. Oh, yeah, somebody shout, he's holy. He's exalted. He's high and lifted up. And his train to feel the temple. Isaiah chapter 6. Says that Isaiah looked up and he seen the seraphims, and they were all one cry to another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, for the whole earth is full of his glory. And then somebody just throw their hand up and say, Holy, holy, holy. See, we praise me. When somebody does great, we clap our hands for them. But really, they are not really worthy of our complete and true praise. Because praise is for something that has no flaws. Praise is for something that is totally and completely oneness. 
praise is made for something that is holy. So that's why I don't praise you. And that's why I don't praise the preacher. And that's why I don't praise the church. And that's why I don't praise my mama. And that's why I don't praise my daddy. And that's why I don't praise my government. And that's why I don't praise anything. But I lift up the name of Jesus. He is the only one that deserves any kind of praise. He is the only one that deserves That is writing to the church. He said he's holy. He said, but number two, he is true. I looked up the word true here in the Hebrew, and it means opposite to what is fictitious, what is counterfeit, what is imaginary, what is simulated or pretended. In other words, the Hebrew word said that true means that there's no uncertainty, that he is certain, that he's not just a pretending God. He's not a God that's stimulated. He's not a counterfeit God. He's not an imaginary God. He's not a fictitious God. But he is a real God. In other words, he's not a dead God like Buddha. In other words, he's not a dead God like Muhammad. In other words, he's not dead. But on the third day, he died. Lord, what are you? 
and trying to tell me about yourself. See, when you have the word key, it represents power and access. So, in other words, he's letting the church know he has all power. He has all access. And I believe in Matthew's gospel, chapter 16, he said, Behold, I've given to you the keys to the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in the heaven. Somebody say he's got all power. He ain't got some power. He ain't got partial power. He ain't got 90% power. But he's got all power. I don't know about you, but that makes me feel good. That I'm serving a God that has all Uh, let's hurry up and go home. All right, can I preach this a, a little while longer? He said that uh, he explains uh, the God that we serve in Revelation 7. He starts out in Revelation, uh, the, the, excuse me, the third chapter and the seventh verse. He then starts out in the eighth verse and says, I know your works. Uh, in other words, I know your preparation. I know what you've been doing. Look at someone say, He knows. He says, We get caught up, brother. Tim, only if people know and if people realize only if they know what I'm doing I wonder if they know and understand what I'm doing, See, I didn't know you was working for people, I thought you was working for God I've been preaching. I've been praising. I've been worshiping. See, when he knows the works, then you don't have to impress nobody else. And what's wrong with people is we forgot that he's the one that knows. And they got to try to prove ourselves to anybody. Paul said, I'm proving myself to you. I am what I am. Yeah. 
Jesus said, look, church, open your eyes. Behold, I've set an open door before you. If you look up the word, open door, it means an opportunity. Look at somebody and say, I've got an opportunity. He said, I put before you an open door that no man can shut. No devil can shut. No principality or power can shut. I come to tell the church that God has put a door of opportunity in front of you. And you want to make up in your mind. Let a man be a liar. And let God be true. Help me, Jesus. It's a neighbor. No man is going to shut this door. He's opening it up. The door. He's opening it up. The portal. He's opening it up. The entrance way. And bless God. I'm walking through it. In Jesus' name. Come on. an open door and you read it on he said number one why it's because you had a little strength but you did not let go of my word look at somebody and say neighbor don't let go God's got to open the door for you hold on preacher I'm weak hold on preacher I'm tired hold on preacher they're talking about me
this before I say it for the ladies. I dislike Walmart. I'm in and I'm out. I don't spend two hours there. I'm in and I'm out. And one day my wife was dragging me to Walmart. And we got there and I seen somebody at the front. And it was a great opportunity for me not to go in that place. They need red lights installed in there to stop you. You know, people, I just, I'm about to get in the flesh. I just want to throw somebody down and cut some off with a button. I'm sorry. I'm just being real with you tonight. Is that all right? But, but anyhow, oh, and I seen a friend of mine, and so we stood in front of the doors there, kind of off to the side. And while we was talking, we wasn't moving. But I realized something. As soon as I moved from talking to the friend I had seen in a while, the door opened. Yeah. Oh, Lord. See, the door was shut until... I moved. But as soon as I made an effort to walk into the place, the door opened. Oh, Jesus. I come to tell somebody there's a door in front of you, but as long as you don't praise him, as long as you don't move, as long as you don't worship him, it's going to stay shut. As long as it's everything, you're going to raise your hands.
If tonight the Lord just said that I was going to do something else, the Lord changed me. Just like that. He said, tell them if the people feel weak in this place tonight, but you haven't let go of the word. If you've not done that, his name, run up here and fall on your face. He said, I'll open the door for you tonight. I don't know who you are, but you better run quickly. If you need God to open the door for you in a situation, in an area, in your marriage, in your finances, in your family, in your physical body. I don't know who you are, but you ought to run up here and fall on your face. I'm giving you the opportunity. The door of opportunity is open and you ought to run up here and fall on your face and say, Lord, I need a door open. Lord, I need you to make a way of escape. I remember Billy Joe was talking. Lord, I need a way out. I need you to move in my marriage. I need you to move in my family. Come quickly, move. And as I'm talking to you, you ought to run up here and just fall on your face and say, God, I need a touch. God, I need a breakthrough. God, I need an anointing. Come on, quickly run. Whoever you are, just run quickly. I'm going to turn up the pencil jacket. We're going to go home. And if you leave the same way you can't, guess whose fault it is. It ain't mine, but it's yours. It ain't Pastor Jackie's, but it's yours. But if you need a breakthrough, run up here right now. Run up here right now. And fall on your face and say, God, I need a touch. Come on, quickly run. Come on, quickly run. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your name is. I don't care where you come from. But run up here. Run up here now. And start calling on him. And say, Lord, I need a blessing. If you can just stand up here, that's fine. You can stand, fall, whatever you want to do. But right now, praise him a minute. Right now, come on in a minute. Right now, make your way up here. And get your blessing. Get your breakfast. Walk through the door. Walk through the door. Walk through the door. Walk through the door. Walk through the door tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Hold on, my knees Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Baba, come to Mahusha. 
Hallelujah. I can't believe some of you let somebody stop you. Let somebody know what somebody thinks about you. I just can't believe you guys. I know what some of you are going through. I know what some of you are going through. And you just happen to be sitting there, not running up here getting your breakthrough. A shame on yourself. You ought to make up in your mind. I ain't letting nothing stop me from walking through the door. That God has got to prepare for me to shame on some of y'all for not moving and letting the door open in your life. You ought to make up in your mind. I'm moving to get my door open. I got to get the door open. So I can walk through it. God's got to open the way for me. I'm prepared. I'm ready for an expectation of the power of the opportunity that God has for me. I'm going to praise him now. Come on, Pastor Jackie. Come on, thank God. I'm on everybody else. Slip up your hands and praise him for a minute. But y'all that want to be up in this hall and get your breakthrough, come on. Jesus, pray for by the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, pray for it tonight. Yeah, yeah. 